Do professional products really make that big of a difference? If you care about your hair, I recommend them. I know, but can I just like grab some Aussie or Dove when I'm at the grocery store? It just depends on what you like. I can show you if you want. Show me? That doesn't even make sense. How would you show me the difference? I have a model waiting for us right over there. We can do one side of her hair with drugstore products and the other side of her hair with professional products. What? Really? Did I just win a game show or something? This is amazing. All right, we're gonna be using OGX as our drugstore brand today. It's one of the most popular drugstore brands. You'll see it suggested all over Instagram and TikTok. Obviously, we're going to be comparing shampoos first here, the drugstore OGX. It's cleverly titled Argan Oil of Morocco. It's going up against our professional shampoo, Red Chem Volume Injection. If you could just feel these in your hands, the first thing that you notice is the difference in the feel of the hair. With the Red Chem Professional Shampoo, you can feel the oily slipperiness of the hair going away, and it turns into more of a clean texture where you can feel it's actually clean. A good shampoo will always get rid of that slippery, waxy feeling that you have in your hair. If it doesn't, your hair is not getting clean. After the shampoo, we use the matching conditioners and let them sit for a couple minutes while I do a quick scalp massage. That's the best part of the whole experience. And then we rinse it out, put her hair up in a turban and went back to my station. Okay, so did the drugstore shampoo hold up okay here? You can't fake cleansing ingredients, but I feel like in a second when we start styling, it's gonna be much closer. So let's start from zero. It better be closer because I love my drugstore dupes. Explain what's going on next. All right, we're back at my station. I'm gonna part her hair down the middle so we can get a nice clean boundary so we can see exactly what the difference is between the OGX side and the professional side. And the first thing you should always do every time you finish washing your hair, you get out of the shower, is towel dry your hair and use leave-in conditioner. That's your base. If you don't use it, you're gonna have dry hair because all the moisture you just put in your hair with that conditioner is gonna leak right out. On the professional side, we're using Purology Color Fanatic. And then OGX didn't actually have a leave-in conditioner. They have leave-in treatments, but those are totally different and won't do the job. Now, if I leave the OGX side without a leave-in conditioner, this wouldn't even be a fair test. The OGX side will come out so terribly, it's not even worth doing the video. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of help by using a Tresemme leave-in conditioner to fill in the gap. Our next product is going to be a blow dry cream with built-in heat protection. Anytime you blow dry your hair, you must be using this. Blow drying this without heat protectant, not a good idea. And just as importantly, this will improve the texture of your hair, making it soft and shiny. A lot of people who complain about frizzy blow dries are skipping this step. Do not skip it. On the pro side, we have the Red Ken Big Blowout. This is my go-to for our model's hair type, medium hair. And then on the drugstore side, we have the OGX Silk Blowout, which I accidentally sprayed on the side of the poor model's face. Sorry about that. It's also important that you don't blindly copy the products that I'm using here. You need to match the products to your hair type, and you probably don't have the exact same hair type as this model. So if you wanna see what's best for your hair, take my hair type quiz and my recommended product list to find out exactly what you need. All right, now we're gonna brush the products through and detangle the hair at the same time, and then we're going to pre-dry here to get some extra water out, and you always wanna remember to never pre-dry the top of the hair. You can see me turn the hair upside down. I do that because the water is always hiding on the underneath layers. The top is always going to be drying anyway because gravity's pulling the water down. So you want to focus on getting the extra water out from the underneath sections. Otherwise, the top will get super dry and the underneath will still be soaking wet and you'll be left wondering why your hair dries so unevenly, which is a really easy way to do damage. Now we're just going to section this out and get started on the blow dry. Well, I can't see any difference at all, so it looks like I'm good to keep using my drugstore dupes. Maybe, but let's actually give it five seconds because you can actually see a pretty big difference in the blow dry here. Okay, well, what do you see? You can see all these little flyaways on the drugstore side, and if you were only used to using drugstore brands, you would think this is totally normal, but it's actually not. The hair on the drugstore side isn't listening to me at all. And I'm pretty decent at getting hair to listen to me. All these little guys are going out in their own directions, blowing whichever way they want to. If you look at the professional side, there are a couple flyaways, but almost all of the hair is staying nice and together. We're not seeing the hair blowing around, doing its own thing. And most people at home don't realize how big of a deal that is. How is that a big deal? A couple hairs aren't doing what you want. Can't you just like skip them and move on? Who cares? I'm doing my best, but any hair that's blowing around is gonna turn into frizz and it's probably gonna turn into frizz before we even finish doing the rest of her hair. 
Really? How would you even know that? You want the style to start as smooth as possible. It's almost like a scale. The smoother your style starts out, the longer it will last before it turns frizzy and gross. You can actually see when I turn her around, it's already frizzed out on the drugstore side, where the professional product side is still nice and smooth. It's a pretty big difference. And all those little flyaways turn straight into frizz. A lot of people wake up the next day wondering why their hair is a frizzy mess and feels dirty already. It's because their products are letting them down. And it's worth mentioning that the real goal in hair is to let the products do the work for you. You shouldn't be washing, styling, and touching up your hair all the time. It's really unhealthy for your hair. Good hair does not take a lot of time and effort on your part. Good hair actually takes less time than bad hair. All good hair requires is breaks between washes and styling. When you get the products right, you really don't have to do that much with your hair because it's on autopilot. Professional shampoo will keep your hair clean for days, and professional styling products will keep your style looking great for days. But when you use cheap products, they don't get the job done. So you're stuck spending all this time on your hair only to have it looking even worse. I don't get it. Why can't you just like use a little bit more of the drugstore product to get the same result? They aren't even made with the same ingredients. It's almost like trying to say two cans of Spam will equal one steak. It doesn't work that way because they're not even made of the same stuff. Okay, whatever, you're right about the blowout, but can't we just like do some iron work and make it look the same? That's actually a really good idea. Let's try it out, see if it works. Before we do iron work, we're going to use heat protectant, and I really recommend you always use a heat protectant with hold. The hold is gonna help your style last longer, so if you do beach waves or curls, they're gonna keep their shape much longer before they fall out. Or, if you're using a flat iron and going straight, your hair is going to stay straight much longer. You always want your style to last as long as possible so you can let your hair rest. But unfortunately, the OGX heat protectant doesn't have any holds, so we'll see how this goes. When you do these waves, you want to do them in sections of about two or three inches high. If you get much taller than that, or if you're just grabbing random sections back there, it's easy to get a little lost and have inconsistency in your sections, which makes them fall out. You'll see a lot of people doing rolling up and down with curling irons, and that works on Instagram and hair models with extensions, but in the real world, this is really the best technique, doing it upside down, because your waves end up lasting way longer and looking way better on day two, three, four, or however long you can go. So did the ironwork seal up the frizzies and make it all look the same? You tell me, can you see a difference on the frizz on either side? Yeah, there's actually a whole lot more frizz on the OGX side. It didn't work. And that's when we just finished, when it looks its absolute best. For the rest of the day, it's gonna continue to get crazier and frizzier throughout the day. Iron work was a good call though. It was worth a shot. It's okay. You don't have to try and make me feel better, but it looks like the curls are falling out on the OGX side too, right? Exactly. The drugstore heat protectant didn't have any hold in it, so they're falling out right away. A lot of people have this problem, and the key is to always use a heat protectant with hold. Hairspray can only do so much. You really want to use a heat protectant to get that hold. All right, so we have one final trick left in our pocket to try and even things back out, and that is hair oil. We're gonna see now if the OGX hair oil can smooth out a little bit of those frizzies, but first, we're gonna use the professional oil, which is Olaplex 7. I'm gonna apply it to where ends, ends, ends. That's where 90% of the oil should go, because ends will drink it back up. And only when there's a tiny bit left, when you run it over your mids, you need to be really careful though, because it's really easy to use way too much oil on your mids. And now for the OGX oil, this is when things really start to take a dark turn. I was able to keep things pretty close the whole time for this test, but when I touched her hair with the OGX oil, you can see, my hands even, like, they paused here. I was like, what just happened? How do I put these things back together? It makes no sense. It was kind of like a Humpty Dumpty situation where the curls weren't holding, the curls were falling out, the oil wasn't getting rid of the frizz. Maybe I try to go in here, maybe I try to go in there. You gotta admit, that got pretty rough there for a second. I did not see that coming. Yeah, I really thought that I would be able to keep things together, but it was kind of like one bad result on top of another bad result, and it ended up being like a house of cards. And it all came crashing down and you weren't good enough to fix it. It was actually pretty entertaining. Well, I'm glad that you were entertained. Are you happy now that you've been able to see the difference? Well, thank you very much for putting on this whole show for me, but there is one thing. I use Pantene, not OGX. Can you show me what Pantene looks like? 